Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, many people watched the Surviving Mars video and noticed that we were using wind turbines on Mars for power, and many people were a little disbelieving at this. They immediately said, the game is flawed, the game is wrong, this is not possible. Martian atmosphere has only 0.7% the pressure of Earth, so surely wind turbines would not work. Well, as it happens, wind turbines are in fact viable on Mars, and NASA actually investigated their, uh, the use of wind turbines as a power source for a future Martian mission. Scientists at NASA Ames collaborated with your industry to create wind turbines which are more suitable for remote environments, and they actually test them by running them off the coast of Antarctica. These designs, which were improvements over existing turbines, have of course since found their way into industrial applications on the Earth. But I know you're wondering why some a place with a 0.7% the atmosphere of Earth sustain a reasonable wind power, and there's a lot of reasons why this is the case. The first thing to keep in mind is what it's competing against. The two other major options for a Martian mission are nuclear, which is great but very expensive and you can't really produce on site. Then there is solar power. Solar power at, ba at base is half as efficient as it is on Earth and actually varies by as much as 40% during the Martian year and essentially drops to near zero during dust storms. The second thing to consider is the environment in which the wind turbines are running. So the amount of energy that can be harvested from a wind is basically proportional to the density of the air and proportional to the cube of the velocity. So let's start with each of these. First of all, the density. You might imagine 0.7% atmospheric pressure is quite a penalty, but that does miss the fact that the Martian atmosphere is actually denser than the Earth's atmosphere at the same pressure because it is colder and it is made mostly of carbon dioxide. So that actually gives it about 100% boost over what you would expect. But the real bonus is going to lie in terms of the wind speeds. And how are those? Well, of course, after the Martian, there's been a lot of discussion about wind speeds on Mars, and we all know that the dust storm that was threatening to blow over the rocket is not something that would really happen on Mars. But there are plenty of features that demonstrate the action of the wind, particularly over long periods of time where geological features have been blown out. But even on shorter scales, there's examples of, say, parachutes from probes being pushed around over several days. The Viking missions carried weather stations with them, and they observed temperature variations, and they observed winds. Now, the winds, uh, they averaged about 10 meters per second during the entire Martian year, which isn't great, but it is actually above the average wind speeds in the U.S., Say, if you look back at Mission Control in Houston, Texas, where the average speed is 12.2 kilometers per hour, if you use the velocity cubed law to figure out the relative efficiency of those wind turbines, it comes out to a factor of about 25, which, when you combine that with the improved atmospheric density, gets you up to 50% efficiency over wind turbines at Houston. Uh, and then that would actually put it comparable to solar panels at the distance of Mars. Of course... Nobody puts wind turbines in Houston because it's actually relatively low wind speeds, but there are plenty of places which do have wind turbines which have lower average wind velocities. And of course, those Martian dust storms which cause solar panels to lose power, those happen to be coincidentally at the same time as there's lots of wind. So a wind and a solar power system could complement each other. And from a construction perspective, working in a lower gravity environment means that many of the structural uh, parts don't need to be quite as strong as they would on an Earth-based turbine. Realistically, though, a turbine designed to work in the Martian environment could probably expect to be 10 to 20 percent as efficient as an Earth-based one. There's also an argument in favor of wind turbines when you consider long-term colonization where you would have to be living off the land, and early materials that could be refined would tend to be structural materials rather than, say, the high-tech uh, processes required to make solar panels via deposition systems, or, for example, the processes required to refine uh, radioactive materials for nuclear power. 
And of course, that is the environment that surviving Mars puts you in. So yeah, it may have seemed silly at first, but when you actually do the math and look at the science, it actually makes complete sense. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.